If you win, you remain standing, and then you add your value with the people that you win. If you lose, you sit down. Okay. If you cannot find another person, you know, there may be cases that there are odd number of students in this room. If you cannot find another person, remain standing and with your value unchanged. And then you repeat this again and again and again and again until there is only one person remaining. All right. So, and then the value of that one person is the number of person, the number of people in this room. Okay. You want to try this together? All right. Please, if, if all of you can stand up. All right. Let's try this together. We're in step one. All right. Everybody in this room, please stand up. And all of you right now are assigned with the value one. Okay. So pick another person. And then play rock, paper, scissors with them. Pick anyone. Could be the person next to you. If you win, remain standing and then you add your value of, your, of the person who you lose. If you lose, you sit down. And then you keep on doing, find another person. standing up and that person will carry on the value which is representing the number of people in this room <laughs> so what number do we have <laughs> all right well notice that at the beginning of the class, we mentioned that algebra can be executed by human or by computer, right? So this time you are executing an algorithm by a human being. And we know that human is susceptible to uh, error, right? We are not accurate. We make error all the time as an illustration of, you know, all of you is demonstrating that you're making error. So if this algorithm is executing by human, then you may have the wrong answer because of a human error. But suppose if we are running this with a computer, the computer is fast and it's accurate. And notice that the advantage of this algorithm is it's extremely fast. If we have a thousand, if we have a hundred people in this room, it goes to fifty in the first step, and it goes to twenty-five, and then to thirteen, and then to seven, to four, two, one. So you can solve this problem within eight steps. All right. If you compare this with the previous version, right? Even the process one, the algorithm three, still you need to count all the empty seats, right? You need, the number of count that you're making is about maybe 10 or 20, uh, or 20 steps, right? But here, you can solve the whole problem within eight steps or nine steps, right? So this is an extremely fast algorithm to use. However, it is susceptible to human error if you're running it to human, right? So once again, there are preconditions, there are requirements of what you need and you know what is the operation environment of this particular algorithm but i mean this is a very creative way of designing an algorithm to solve the problem all right when you talk about algorithm design usually it is about creativity because you know everyone can come up with the most uh, obvious solution of linear search right 
Everyone knows that, but this is slow. If you need to come up with the faster solution, you need to think about creativity. How do you solve this pro problem creatively and fast, right? So that's pretty much about it in algorithm design, all right? So next, we're going to talk about uh, Python. We're going to talk about the actual programming. Well, the first thing that I want to talk about today is in Python programming is the difference between an if statement versus an if else statement. Okay. Well, this is actually in SQL, but the concept is is the same thing. All right. Let's suppose we have two variables. The score of John is eighty-seven. The score of Jane is ninety-two. Okay. And we have two code segments on the left side. If the score of John is below average, then we print out John is below average. If the score of Jane is below average, then we print out Jane is below average. <coughs> On the right hand side, it's a similar code, but slightly different. If John is below average, we print out John is below average. Else if <coughs> Jane is below average, we print out Jane is below average. What is the difference between these two codes? There is a big difference, right? So John is 87, Jane is 92. Let's say if average is 95. If on the left hand side, John is smaller than average. This is true, right? So this will be executed. And then Jane is smaller than average. This is also true. 92 is smaller than 95, right? This will also be executed. But on the right hand side, if John is smaller than average, then this will be printed out. <coughs> Else if Jane is smaller than average. Else if, what does that mean? If this is false and if this is true, this will be executed. Since this is true, this line will not be executed. Right? So there's a big difference between if and else if. In this particular case, chances are that you will be writing in this. It's much, it makes much more sense. So if you mistakenly using an else if statement rather than an if statement here, you will be generating a wrong result. This is semantic error. This is logical error. Okay? And this is one of the most commonly made logical error by uh, new programmers such as you. Okay? So I want to make a notice that. Professor, yes? Hmm? No, this is actually in C code, but the logic is exactly the same. Okay? So. Um, yeah, I should have changed it, but you know, but you understand the logic, right? <coughs> okay. Another problem is um, when you are copy and pasting the code that I have in this class. Sometimes it may not be working. Well, the problem is that um, let's do a very quick, uh, quick trial. <coughs> well, I'm having some problem with my. Um, PowerPoint, but um, let me do a very quick demonstration to you about what I mean. Let's say I want to execute this line of code, and I, what I'm doing is I'm directly copying this code into the Python shell. I'm sorry. Well, it doesn't allow me to copy this. Well, well, I'm sorry. I don't have the the working Python shell, but um, 
The problem here is when you directly copy and paste it from a PowerPoint to a Python shell, the quotation mark is not being cop uh, copied correctly. And you need to fix this. So um, I couldn't get a good demonstration of that, but when you, <coughs> when you can actually uh, paste it into idle, well, I can't do it here. But um, after you're pasting it, you need to modify the, the quotation, the single quotation and double quotation. Um, so basically, you need to get rid of it and then type into single quotation and double quotation by yourself manually if it is not working. So I'm, I'm, I'm worrying about that. Some of you may be directly copying this code and pasting it into the Python shell, and it is not working. All right? And the problem of that is because of the quotation mark. All right? Maybe I can do a live demonstration to you next week, uh, but uh, this is a notice to you, to you that if you are directly copying and pasting from PowerPoint to a Python shell, sometimes it's not working because of the, of the quotation mark. Okay. Well, we talk about the while loop in the, in the flip class video. So supposedly you watched the video or, uh, already, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time into explaining this. So this is a syntax of the while loop, right? You have the keyword while, and then the condition, and then close with a uh, colon, and this is an indented block of statement, all right? And it is distinguished by the indentation, all right? So how do you define this as a cook segment that is inside of the while loop is depending on the indentation, the space in front of it, okay? So we also talked about in the video that there are some example usage of while loop such as repeating a code segment n times, we <coughs> demonstrated in the video, input validation, all right, and ask for user input until end of loop command is entered. So what do we mean by that? This is a code segment. Well, this is a pseudo code, all right? We talk about pseudo code, right? So we want to create a program that keep asking for user input until the user enter the quit command. In some of the case, you do not know ahead of time how many input do you need from the user, right? The user, for example, in this case, the user determines how many user, how many input I want to in enter, right? In this case, I want to calculate the average value, but I don't know how many numbers the user is entering, okay? So in the first step, we create two variables, counter variable equal to zero, and it's variable called sum equal to zero. Step two, we ask the user to enter a number. Okay. We use the value minus one to signify this is the end of the program. All right. So the user can enter zero number. If the first number that he's entering is minus one, that means quit, right? I'm not, I don't want to calculate anything and just quit, right? So while the condition is, while the input is not minus one, then you repeat this three step again and again and again, right? In the first step, you add the input value to sum. You increase the counter by one, and then you ask the user to input again, right? If the input is not, if, is not minus one, you do this two step and then ask for another input again, right? If it is not minus one, and then you do this two step again and then ask again, until the user enter minus one. When the user enter minus one, then you display the value, which is the sum over the counter, which is the average value. Okay. So this is a pseudo code that you write. Well, I would recommend you to actually take out a piece of paper to write out this kind of pseudo code, a step-by-step -step logic of your calculation. If you are involving a, lot, a, a highly complicated uh, programming task. So this is the actual code written based on the pseudo code. In step one of the pseudo code, we declare two variables, a counter and a sum, all right? And then we ask for the input from a user and convert it to the flow point and assign it to input num, okay? While input num not equal to one, so this is step, one, step two. This is exactly the same thing in your in the pseudo code, right? You add sum equal to the input plus the input number and then you increase the counter by one. This is a shorthand, all right? This is exactly the same as counter equal to counter plus one, all right? 
right? Counter plus equal one is this is a shorthand of counter plus counter plus one. Counter equals to counter plus one. 